start recording. And we are live. Hi, I'm Reigns with Michael. I'll be one of your shoutcasters today, along with our esports gaming coach at Bruton Parker College. Hello, my name is Peter Thompson. I am the esports coach for all three of our teams. We hope everyone is doing absolutely wonderful tonight. And we can't wait for an exciting game today. We hope everyone is going to have a wonderful time while we're here. This is a fairly new esports team, so we hope that we will have an exciting future. So we'll have a bunch of people jump on at about 9.30. How many viewers do you actually expect we're going to have? Because we just gained about 10 or 12 followers. Can you send it again? What? Can you send it again? Uh, Looks like we're officially about to start it. We are officially a spectator. We're officially a spectator. Great. Everything's working. So how do you think we're going to do tonight? I think we're going to do well. Um, as long as they uh, keep in control and uh, communicate well with their uh, plays and their ideas, uh -huh. I think we'll be able to do well. All right. That seems great. I'll hand the mouse over to you so that way you can control everything that's going on. For the record, Peter over here is the Overwatch expert, and I merely give everything a entertaining touch. Oh, yeah, I do. OK, this is going to be our focus point. This is going to be our focus point. This guy right here, Sunset. Mm -hmm. Right now, the team is discussing uh, their plans. What do you, what do you think that their actual plan is going to be? From what you can tell and what's going on. After watching their games earlier and uh, knowing them as well, uh, with how they play, their their goal is going to be to keep the um, tanks in the front, eat up the damage, damage um, their attack attackers, damagers in the middle, uh, dealing out the damage in the supports. One in the back to keep them all healed, and then third or second one roaming around keeping everyone healed okay. together. Um, as long as they can keep that together, keep that um, Winston uh, up in the front, keeping everyone focused right. on him, I think they're going to be right. fine. The uh, last game they were able to really just break people down with that Winston. Yeah, so I think right now that that's probably what they're going to be doing. But how often do you think they can be making these continuous plays without changing it up yet? Because even though we're starting off the year, these are things we're going to have to think about in the future. I think they can do it every game. After watching their games earlier today during their practice, they were pulling it off each game. Even when they messed up and made a mistake, they came back and still got the win. Right, right, right. right. I think we're about to see something very, very, very interesting here. For sure. <laughs> Let's see how many viewers we're we have six viewers right now. We have sixteen viewers right now. Six. Oh, six viewers right now. I'm not sure. Seven. So, hey, seven. Me being one of them. So for about the other five people. So. Let's go into a little bit of the history of Britton Parker College. Founded in 1904, beautiful place, an athletic college made for just about everybody. So this is a new esports team. How long has this been in the process of creation? Uh, this has been probably about a year, year and a half in the making. Year, year and a half, okay. All right. So were you the main head in charge of uh, getting the esports team ready, or who's, who's been the lead process of that? It's been a mix of the athletic directors and myself and the other coach. Okay. Uh, making the plans of, with myself, knowing what gamers expect, what gamers want, what we'll need as our systems. Right. And with them knowing how to get it moving and uh, get the conversation going right. on the administrative side of things. Uh -huh. It looks like our first game is going to be taking over the map Paris. And we have some incredible controls with us right now. Ooh. Oh, cool. Yeah. 
So we're actually able to travel through the map right now. Yes. I'm actually going to see if we can't go in the first person with that Hanzo. There we go. It's Jing's choice here. Yeah. I like these controls so much more. Yeah. So it looks like the players are actually talking about the map and maybe even complaining about it a little bit. Is this map, what separates Paris from all the other maps? It's a very strange map in the way that it's designed. Um, the beginning of the map, if you can take control right here where the Sanzo is, it's very easy to keep control and win the game. Right. The enemy team is going to be one team. Let's see if I can disconnect from them. Oh, our team is ready. Doesn't look like a can, but there's a choke point right there that if they can keep that in, under our control, <laughs> there's not any breakthrough. Right. If the team breaks through that, it becomes much harder on the Bruton Parker side to right. defend the point. Looks like we've actually changed up our hero composition from normally no Winston this time. That's true. I can't wait to see how this will actually go down, and it looks like they actually have a Winston popping up with a with a teleporter. It's going to be insane. Oh, no, we were wrong. Uh, we're on the yeah, so you're right, we are. Yeah, we are. There we go. Looks like we're being orange right now. Yeah. They have just taken out the round. Looks like they are currently taking heavy, heavy damage. Lucio coming in with the heals, Dasher back as Doomfist, traveling to the point as Mercy is healing as many as she can, reviving as many as but looks like Mercy has just been taken out. This is the first like real challenge that we've actually seen today with the Barons. How do you think they're going to be handling this? I think they're going to handle it well. They just have to take some time, uh, find out how is the enemy team running this map and how can they counter that. Right. It's just like I said earlier, they have to get through that choke point to be able to do anything. Otherwise, as they walk up, they can get picked off, off one by one. Right. As you see up here, you can see the outline of another enemy up there. <laughs> that's going to be a sniper that's trying to get onto them, trying to pick them off as they just try to walk up to the choke point. Right. Now, as we can see with them, the enemy is, is there crowding around that choke point. What do you think is the best way with the team composition that they have to actually break through the enemy's front lines? I think they have a good team comp with this. They have the people that can. They pulled out the Winston, as you can see here. They do have what they need. They just need to make it happen. Yeah. It looks like they're, they're able to hand it pretty well. Mercy in the back, healing a little bit. And Hanzo releasing the incredible power of the dragons. Now, for those who don't know, the dragons can literally, they're like a ghost of pure damage. They go through walls, dealing any, destroying anything in their way. Oh, my God. It looks like our barons have pushed up just enough. Junkrat unleashes an ultimate. It looks like he makes some kills, and he's able to come in and he's able to capture the point. This is the object. This is what they, the play that they needed to get on there. Get them all dead all at once. They have the time to take over, and move on to the next objective. Right. Really, in Overwatch, it's about that one push. That's the thing. It's the one play, the one thing that can really get everything going. And now they're on to their next objective. How do you think they're going to handle this next objective? I think they can do it. This next objective is one of the other harder parts of this map, but this mm -hmm. enemy team is doing the wrong thing. They've moved up too close. They have the chance to take them out one by one now, and they get on the objective. All right. It looks like, oh, we have a cluster of ultimates coming out again. And it just... And it looks like the Barons are, have been pushed back as far as they have could have. Winston is still in, holding it on until he's not able to anymore. This is a real challenge for them, but I think they're going to be able to break through. They can. They just need to get uh, together all at once and ready and figure out how is the enemy team uh, structuring their play, where are they staying at, and how to counter that. So out of curiosity, how often does that actually take to, for an average team in Overwatch to do? It's going to take them a little bit of time. Um, we can see through the walls, we can see the outlines of the other team, they right. can't. They have to poke their head through, see where's the enemy team stationed at. Right now, I think they're at a bad position. We <laughs> can, if they will, they can go around the walls, they can get over them. They can counter this well if they will 
push through that. Yeah. As you can see right here, we have we have our Sigma the car. He's push he's pushing in, but he's he's having to back up some from taking so much damage. They are. Uh, Lucio is able to also help along with that. So Lucio has an area of effect healing. It takes very slow for his healing, but because it's able to get such a range and it moves along with it. But our Lucio is taken. Out. But looks like at the moment he's the only one taken out. Our Zarya and our Junkrat need to be protected. And our Junkrat is dead. Lucio's gone. But Lucio has been revived by our Mercy, the Angel Girl. So, out of curiosity, how important is a Mercy to a team cop? Mercy is going to be very important to this team. She can fly around, heal, and revive. Uh -huh. They need her to stay here and keep them alive. Right. Mercy also has an incredible ability in which she is able to increase the damage of other players. And as you can see, it's an inc it's ability that, that truly, truly helps because they need to get this team out of the way. And it looks like they're constantly pushing. Doomfist, an incredibly mobile character, is able to fly around them insanely. It looks like it's Zarya versus Zarya. And one Zarya takes out a junk rep, but another, and their Zarya is taking out by our Lucio. Junkrat's able to take out a, uh, a Hanzo. Now, as we're focusing on this Mercy, and she's able to fly, go around, all this stuff. Yo, back up, back up. With, she, with her being able to uh, help out with this Junkrat, and this yeah, Junkrat making incredible plays, but unfortunately dying at the last minute. And we notice that they have a hero changeup. How often would you see that in a professional match? You're going to see it quite often. Um, some heroes just won't stack up against the enemy they're playing against or won't work with the rest of their team, and they have to make that change. They right. have to be willing to make that change for the sake of the game. Right. Along with that, we saw our Doomfist switch over to a May. Her being able to build up walls and also freeze herself in order to stay mobile. Well, not necessarily mobile, but active in the fight. So that way, she's able to heal herself for a brief moment and even go invincible. All right, let's take a look at our Sigma right now. So, what do you think their plan is at the moment? It looks right now, like they're trying to flank. They're trying to go up the left side, maybe get around that wall, so that way they can move the battle instead of in the middle of a doorway, uh -huh. all in the middle of an open area, so they have the chance to support each other. Right, right, right. Looks like they did take down the right Reinhardt. They are taking down the Zarya. Uh -huh. They just have to uh, get close to that uh, point now because they are getting close to it. They are now under a minute to start standing oh, on the objective. That's a good point. They have to get in there. Mm -hmm. So let's say they, they are they're able to get on the objective, but they're not able to fully capture it. At this point, the game goes into overtime. Now, once they go into overtime, they have to stay on the point. And Hansa releases another dragon again, able to push back the barons a little bit more. And it looks like the enemy has surrounded the point at this point. May trying to wait for her teammates to gather up, and so that way they can let loose another attack. Got him. Got Lucio. Lucio using one of his abilities to increase the speed of his teammates. Junkrat flying around using his explosives as a way to propel himself. This is a classic game move where splash damage often leads to a, a concussion effect in which your player can, and he's able to flank around. He's able to get behind the enemy team, see what's going on, and he's able his to make it. His one goal is to keep that objective alive. Just keep them in overtime so right. the team can get there. Did right. he do it? Can he make it? Yeah, looks like Lucio's in there, and the rest of the team seems to be in there, and they have got to stay on the objective at this point. And it's a defeat for round one. Yeah. So at this point, what do you think their, their strategy should be now for dealing with them? At this point, they need to go through and um, address how what kind of team comp they need to have. Do they need to change their champions that work together? Now that they know what kind of champions the other team plays, who right. do they need to play to counter that? Right, right, right. So the other question I have is... I wish I could get that. Alright, tell you what, yeah, let's take this time to react to some of the things. Reigns, Pog, thank you. Reigns, my man. <laughs> thank you. Go Barons, of course, an emoji for from Minty. Uh, Barons, Pog, and I wish I could give bits. I don't know what a bit is, but... Hey, you know what? If you can, then do it. I can't kill, I can't kill Lucio, but I can 
Sorry, so, there we go. Mm -hmm. uh, so as we're waiting right here, we see that, that this time they're on the defense. And it looks like this time they have Torbjorn. Dasher playing Torbjorn. He is able to build a turret. So that way, he's able to defend more than one location. Essentially, and the enemy team brings out a Hammond. Oh my gosh, with the Wrecking Ball able to power through them, trying to take the objective. Hammond is a seriously aggravating character where he's able to essentially turn into a ball, roll as fast as he can, land on an objective, and essentially hold it for as long as he can. He's weak in some areas, but man, he's aggravated. And the Lucio is launched off the platform. Their diva defends, and looks like Torbio is trying to defend that point, but it looks like the enemy team is taking the point at the moment. What do you think the Baron should be doing to try and defend the point right now? Dude. Right now, they need to get them just off the point. They need to establish their turrets from Torbjorn. They need to get their whole team there. They need to focus each person individually. They can't right. be allowing their team to split up the way they are. Mm -hmm. Right now, they're not even near the point. They're still on. They're on where the second okay. point is. They're more worried about winning the match than winning the point at this point now. Yes. Okay. So our barons had a difficult time trying to come in and take this point. So what? What about this makes it extremely difficult to attack? It being one room, it seems there are very few ways you can actually enter. They're, uh, the barons are actually in the. They sh if they play it right, they have the advantage here. They have very right. uh, slim yeah. corridors, doorways mm -hmm. they have to get through. Yeah, they can lock down this building if they can. Yeah. Um, otherwise, the team has to break through, which it looks like they are. Yeah. And Mercy is able to provide incredible healing. Winks then able to jump around, but also the Hammond. Being able to, oh, Diva making an ultimate. She's going to explode. Is Mercy able to protect herself? And Diva ends up taking out the Hammond. It's and Lucio is able to take out multiple teammates along with the other oh, teams, uh, other teams Torbjorn using his turrets. So, the next question is, what do you what do you think is the ultimate play to make here? So that way we, they can officially get them off. Do they need to wait on all their ultimates to make sure you use them in one final blow, or what's it going to take to get them off this objective? Their ultimates are going to be what it's going to take. Uh, using them efficiently, effectively. Here, reviving the uh, right. uh, Winston to keep him alive, keep him helping to split the team up. They need the team to be split apart. Yeah. Right now, their other team is targeting everybody singly at the same time, so that way no person can stay alive. Oh, right. Right. Which, uh, oh, looks like Lucio popped out his ultimate, giving everybody a quick burst of health, making sure that they're on the point, staying contested. It looks like they have to defend it for a full four minutes and they might just be able to do it Hammond coming in hot coming in on that Hanzo able to defeat the Hanzo it's truly a shame but however Lucio comes back in is able to heal it looks like we have some possible revives from Mercy but the question is where is Mercy and she is gone it looks like they might be able to take the point what do you think it looks like they're going to take, like they can contest the point. We should be able to still win this. We should be able to still win this. There's still three minutes left, and they're on the point. They're defending yeah, it. Because <laughs> sometimes in Overwatch, things just take time. You have to have the will to be patient, yet at the same time, the endurance to deal with all of this electronic bloodbath. Dude, we got to just stay behind. <laughs> We see Orissa being able to pop down shields, being able to provide covering fire, attacking Hammond as much as they possibly can. Hammond really causing a lot of problems with his great mobility. The enemy Lucio able to pop up his ultimate. Our team using a Roadhog to deal as much damage as they can. And our Sombra is taken out. Yeah, that fashion is weird. The Barons are now trapped in their spawn point, it looks like. But... It seems as though they're able to take back their point. Slowly but surely, their point is being untaken, essentially, being, since they're standing on their own objective. The enemy team is still giving them a very, very hard time. They're, it's going to be very difficult. Diva puts out her ultimate, and it goes splat. It has no effect on them. Hanzo lets out an ability, allowing some of his teammates to see through very few walls and they're able to use that to their advantage, but not to a point. It looks like right now the Barons are stuck. In, some of the Barons are stuck in their spawn room. The Hammond from the other team lets out his ultimate, trapping them in a minefield. 
And one of the other things that Hanuman can do is he goes in, plops down, and once he's able to use his ultimate, he's able to use it whenever he wants to. Zion using Zenyatta right now. Zenyatta is, an, is a robot monk who is able to bless people and curse people. Now, hopefully this is going to be able to work, being that Zenyatta is actually a healer, which can do a lot of damage. So this is going to be incredibly useful. The other problem that they're currently facing is, some, is the Bastion. But round two is complete. It's money, fam. So yes, I do wish I could have your money. I hate to say it, but it's true. So how would you say our performance was in that game? It was solid. We had the defense, they just broke through. We they had the offense, through? they were just able to defend against it. They have the basics to go as far as they can. Okay. Sometimes you don't win everything. Uh, as Peter goes in to uh, check what's going on with the, with the other team, I would actually like to ask our audience some questions. How is everyone doing today? I hope that they're doing incredibly good. Looks like we actually have an official response. Uh, we all got to make a living. Yes. I cannot wait for standing in front of a microphone to be a living. That would be incredible. Overwatch has been an incredible game, released in, if I'm correct, 2016. It, I remember playing it. It was awesome. And to know that we're actually, Overwatch is actually leading the charge, making gaming in a sport, an official sport, is absolutely incredible. And now we are entering Hollywood. Hollywood is one of the original maps on Overwatch, and it's absolutely beautiful. We'll see what's going on here. That's what I was saying. We just need to stay behind the shield, really. That's all I was saying. Because if we, all, if we heal them and we stay behind them and do damage and all sorts of stuff, we can't get broken apart. And if someone's pulled out a Once again, we are Team Orange. Zion so added 20 seconds, meaning that they need, the simply need more time to relate. Like we are all great. I got hit yeah, in the face with flour. Uh, you should find more stuff to announce. Thank you very much. I will uh, see if I can literally announce everything in my life. And Peter has returned. What was going on back there, Peter? I'm trying to check up on the team, see what's break what is uh, mm -hmm. not working, what can we do to address it, um, can we find where everything is falling apart, and put that back together. So what's the plan now? Um, to work behind the shields, um, we have an Orissa. Let's see if I can go back to her. She has a shield that she can drop, but people can stay behind that shield. Especially their high damage players like um, Farah. Well, Farah's gonna be up in the sky most of the time if she does her job right. right. And then we have Widowmaker, who is a high damage sniper. If they can stay behind shields, stay behind walls, and deal the damage quickly without taking damage, we'll be good. Right, right. So with Dasher switching up, playing as Farah, we have Zion as. Uh, as Zenyatta. This is a switch up that we haven't seen yet from the Barons today, being that we've watched the other stream and, and interacted with that. So why do you think they've made these changes? They're looking for, um, with Zenyatta, let's see, is he still playing at Zenyatta? No, he did he's change back over to Mercy. Change back to Mercy. Um, with Zenyatta, the idea would be to, um, they have the different orbs he can shoot out, some that are focused on healing, some that are focused on uh, allowing an enemy to take more damage from uh, right. our, our team. Um, that would be have been his goal. Switching to Mercy is just straight healing, keeping people alive. Right, right. Along with also giving that slight damage boost at times. Yes. Right. So it looks like Hammond once again Hammond coming in. Back in here. Back in here. All right. Let's see. How do you think this far is going to do against the... Oh, she's coming in against Bastion, but Bastion's able to take her down. This is a fairly similar group to what they actually ran with last time. What's the advantages of using a Bastion, a character that essentially turns into a mobile turret? And It's My World has also changed back into a Bastion. We notice that he has an ability to heal himself as well. He changes into that turret, able to shoot through the shields, and basically cause a lot of chaos. Yes, the advantage of a Bastion is high damage output. You uh, lose some mobility, but the damage output well overtakes the advantage. Mm -hmm. Contrast. Now we also know Bastion has a huge weakness in the fact that his back is actually incredibly exposed. 
Ant has a he has a huge weak point. Mercy able to come. Oh, we actually have our Winston on the point. Let's go. Able to fight against that Tracer. This is a terrible matchup against uh, against for the Tracer. He's able to slowly capture the point. Possibly able to get the card. A hey, Tracer is hacked. We have taken out their Tracer with a Sombra Winston combo. The question is, will the rest of the team be able to make it to the point? Diva coming in on it. She is hacked. They're able to slowly whittle down the Diva's damage with Winston's Tesla cannon. And it looks like they're able, they're going to be able to capture the point. Alustio comes on top, but he's able to miss the Bastion. He lets out an ultimate. Zion switches to an Ana to try and take out to try and take out the enemy team's Bastion. It oh. looks like Lucio is having a plan right now, but is unfortunately taken out, and it looks like our team is back in spawn while Samra sneaks around, scouting out what needs to happen as she goes in invisible, preparing. Oh, she's planning on taking out that Bastion, it looks like. Maybe even the Diva, too. What do you think she's going to go for? Oh, she goes for the Diva. Focus Bastion, focus Bastion. Everybody go after Bastion. All right, she goes after the Diva. She got the Diva. Here, and now, they're fo now they've learned what to do. They're focusing on Pacific people. They're pulling the team apart. Right. And now they have someone on the point. Mm -hmm. So what's the advantage between push, 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 push. focusing specific people versus yeah, trying to hit the team in general? Bro, what? Trying to hit the team in general, you're not going to do enough damage uh, to take everyone out. Your team is going to be too split apart, not focusing on the same people. If you focus one person at a time, you can do massive damage all at once, each person. Right. Just knocking them down one at a time. Right. Essentially, you want a domino effect. You want you don't want an explosive effect. Is what I'm hearing. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Rokhod able to put himself with the hill. The Bastion, eight, he gets hooked. Shot again. The Bastion is down by Roadhog. Mercy coming in, Dude, healing people. Okay. The question is, what will our Winston do? Tracer coming up, able to provide incredible amount of damage. Her speed is just purely aggravating. Now, if I'm correct, was the Diva just hacked and outed from her ultimate? I believe her ultimate did work. However, I... It don't think it worked is, is on us. It did right launch, here, but, but everybody got out of the way. Right, right. And now we have the Winston. He is on the point. He's keeping them focused. Until now, which when he was destroyed by that diva. So what makes diva versus Winston? What kind of what? How how would a Winston win against a diva? How does the diva win against the Winston? It's all about play. Right. But do you position yourself around your team? Do you position yourself in the air, in the sky? It's all about that. Right, right, right. It's mind games at this point. Right. It looks like Roghog is able to use his ultimate, pushing the enemy team back, able to do an incredible amount of damage, literally spewing trash at them until they die. Hammond is taken out. It's incredible what they're able to do. We hear that they're eventually just up going to charge the payload now. It looks like they're almost able to take Winston and Zion. They take the payload! And that's why you never give up. You can come back in the last three seconds of the round. Now they have another two and a half minutes chance to go and take over the next point. Right, right, now that right. the idea is a payload that they're slowly moving across the map, they have to stay near it to keep it moving. And so it's a very big mixture of keeping it protected, keeping it moving, but also winning the fight. Right, right, right. So the other thing is, how is this enemy team's Bastion going to be handling now that the payload is moving? If it was my team, I would tell them to get off the Bastion. He's not as mobile. He can't keep them together. And now if they keep them trapped, the right. Bastion is perfect. But this team is going to be moving. Right, right. Sombra releases the ultimate, essentially hacking everybody, making all of their abilities useless. And our team is able to take them out with a four-man kill on our side. Hammond still being a little aggravating, along with the Bastion, able to hide up in a corner. What's the plan? Just shoot him and hook him. There we go. Nice move on our Roadhog. Winston is staying on the point. Now, Winston is normally a mobile tank. Should he be staying on the point right now or allowing other, uh, or taking the front line? Or should he be doing exactly what he's doing right now? He should now? be doing what he's doing. He's watching the whole map. He's seeing where people are, where, the, where his team is, where the enemy team is, and where he needs to go to take somebody out. Right. It's all about observing, trying to find out where you need to go, where the team needs. Looks like Lucio earlier just released his ultimate on the team, increasing every... Oh! Diva with the bomb! Not able to make it. Tracer is an incredibly fast hero, hero with strong SMGs. So, I'll tell you this. 
What, what is the main purpose of Tracer? She's able to zip around, able to just quickly fire, and then dash away. Is she just meant to be aggravating, meant to uh, specifically go one-on-one -on -one against heroes? What's the main goal with Tracer? Your plan is to get around them, get behind them, just keep them distracted. So uh -huh. other people on the map can move the objective forward, can get the kill. Right, right, right. As you can see, your Sombra was just revived, and now she's already invisible and running around. Mm -hmm. She's trying to get her behind the enemy team, keep them distracted. Right. Find a good spot where she can pop out of nowhere and you get a kill. But of course, you can aim as good as you can. You can heal as good as you can. You can take damage like no one else. But if you're not able to play these mind games, you're going to lose. And it looks like we might be going... We are into overtime. Now, the players have to stay on the cart. And if they're not on the cart long enough, they will lose. We just saw right there the Overwatch uh, overtime just went back a little bit. That's because someone was not on the objective. They literally have to have someone on that objective in order to win. Roadhog has his ultimate ready, ready to pounce at any moment, essentially, and now they're officially about to make it to the next point, and they have another minute, 30 seconds to win the match. Roadhog against this Brigitte. Brigitte is a healer that's able to do melee damage as well. So, I've heard Brigitte being an overpowered hero and a lot of controversy around her, so what's the main goal behind Brigitte? The Brigitte. The goal is that she has a shield, and she has a melee, and she has a heal. Right. She has massive use potential to keep the team alive, to keep the team focused. Uh, the enemy team focused on her when they don't need to be focusing on her. Right. Next thing, we noticed that there's a Bastion in the corner back there. We saw a little bit early. Oh, Tracer with the bomb, sticking Echo and killing her. I'm on point. So it looks like they're able to get rid of that Bastion. Oh, Diva on top, ready to snipe someone. And she's able to... Go down, release her ultimate, and kill multiple members of our team. Why is, Eva, is Diva's ultimate so dangerous, so powerful? It's so hard to calculate. If you don't know for sure where you're going That's to be to hot. dodge it, That's you're not dodging it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the next question. Oh, Zenyatta is charging up a blast, but Bastion is able to take him down. It looks like this is going to be pretty tough for our Barons. With 16 seconds left, they have to get on that point, or else overtime will not be an option. They will automatically lose the battle. Vignata charging up again, seeing how they're going to try and get on that point, seeing what could possibly go. Looks like they've announced the push. They're literally on the push. One second left, and they're on it. It's overtime! Zenyatta, no, my bad. Lucio coming up with the ultimate, every, giving everybody a quick boost of health, and now they are on that objective, and they will not Pull off. It's currently contested. Hammond's on it. He's trying to get them off. They have a Pharaoh back in. She's going to be using her rockets and her splash damage to ultimately destroy anyone in her path. And then it's the Roadhog versus the Hammond and the ha and Roadhog again versus this, all these two characters. This is literally insane. How does someone manage to keep track of literally everything as a player? You just have to look at what's on your screen. You just have to shoot at what moves. I can't go mercy. It looks like this time the Barons will be on defense. What do you think their plan will be? Their plan is going to be just to get on the point as quick as possible. Keep it moving as fast as they can. Keep everybody uh, working together behind the shields. It's all about their support, keeping everyone alive. And your right. tanks taking the damage. But if your tanks take the damage and the damage isn't put out by your other damage dealers, it's not going to work. Right, right, right. We see Zenyatta giving one of his orbs. So, does this orb provide healing over time, or what's the purpose of these orbs? These orbs are gonna uh, give a boost in health, maybe attack speed, um, health. Um, and the other side of it is that it's going to take away health and allow the enemy team to take more damage from our sub our team. Right. What do you think their plan is going to be now? They've they seem to have gotten rid of their Winston. They're uh, still keeping the Sombra. They're, they're going back with Zion and his Zenyatta. What, what's their plan here? Their plan is to try to pick them off one by one, um, just like that, but not in that fashion. Okay. Looks like Zenyatta is still throwing through. She, he's been stunned. Oh, but the Roadhog is hacked. Unfortunately for Zenyatta, that did not help. They're still going to be trying out Junkwreck on the defense. 
throwing bombs wherever he can, and being able to explode the Bastion. Now, Bastion is normally a defensive character. Why would they be using him on offense? They know how to play him. They're, lo- they're letting him stand right here on the point where he could be picked off, but he, he has trust in his teammates. Right. And that's what we need to build in our team. Right. Right. And they're making the right call out. I'm hearing them yell. We have to wait on the team. They yeah. know they have to work together as a plan. Mm-hmm. And, and looks like they've even clustered them right here. And they, they put them in this one choke bite where Junkrat's bombs are able to just splash, 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 splash down on them. And they've captured two thirds of the objective. If you were them, what would your what would your theory be now? My theory would be to pick them off one by one. Start with the weakest, and then go to the tanks. The tanks are right. there as a distraction up until your damage has been dealt. Right. That's why these tanks will often have these movement abilities that are insane. That, for instance, Winston's jump that you saw, Diva being able to jet around everywhere, but. Our Junkrat is able to use his Rip Tire, a powerful ultimate ability that is able to instantly kill any weaker health hero. Roadhog healing himself, getting ready for the future fight. It looks like they're all trying to crowd around. Everybody has to deal with that tracer. Roadhog's ultimate is ready. The question is how and when will he use his ultimate? It's any man's game this point would be ultimate but it looks like the barons have been pushed back sombra again using a teleport looking like she's going to get behind the bastion waiting waiting for him come on she hacks him and takes him out we noticed that earlier some Samba, before dealing with the Bastion, decides to throw something, and that's called a teleporter beacon. Do you think she should have done that, or should she she have gone to have? Because that teleporter beacon could have led her to safety, if if need be. It was the right play. It was the right play? Anna, she's an incredibly interesting sniper. Because most snipers are stereotypically ideal damage. But Anna has a special sniper rifle that allows her to target allies and heal them with very special needles and probably in a way that will definitely be outlawed by whatever practicing government has allowed this weapon. So why would someone want to go for a healer sniper? It keeps your team alive, but it also allows you to stay far back and out of the way of danger to do the damage. Right. Behind. So essentially, you can be safe, unlike the Mercy, which is having the force to go into combat. And that's the main appeal of her. And here Junkrat. we go with the ultimate. Is he going to make it? Can he kill them? I think he's, he's able to do it. He's able to get the Bastion. The point is halted for just a brief little bit. And those brief moments can keep the game alive. We can just saw how the brief win. moment of overtime could lead to a loss or a victory. We see our team, our Sombra, trying to, about to go for the Rogue Hawk. And our Anna is all. Oh, Diva uses a defensive matrix able to block damage. Now that ability is extremely, extremely powerful. And this team is incredibly, incredibly good that the Barons are fighting against. So... The question is, what's making this team so successful? Are they communicating, or did they just have the correct hero set up? I would say it's the communication on their side. Oh. Right. Some are currently having our ultimate ready. We could be seeing a play by the Barons that will be absolutely insane if everybody uses their ultimates at just the right time. Sombra hacking people, Reinhardt stunning them, Mercy healing people like no one's business. Anna being able to to boost someone, a Roadhog with the ability to throw trash and damage people with said trash. It looks like many of the teammates are being in critical health condition. We just see... Uh, Saucitude change from Mercy into uh, into Lucio. The question is, why? The Lucio gives them the t- movement that they need, which they critically need at this point. There's two minutes forty seconds left. They keep moving the point closer. They need the movement speed to when when they die to get back to the fight. There's right. no time that can be wasted at this point. Right.
It looks like Sabra is preparing her teleporters. Sigma being used as a tank to provide shielding. Oh, and the D.Va comes in. Oh, it's a battle between D.Va and Sigma. We don't know how it's going to go. D.Va is on the rope. She needs some serious healing. Will she come back? She has come back almost at nearly full health. Sigma tries to block her out. D.Va unleashes a rocket barrage, taking people out. Anna able to snipe the D.Va, trying to get her out of the Junkrat with his rip tire about to take people out, but unfortunately he himself is gone. Now, we have one of our players playing as Hammond. How do you think Hammond's going to do on this map? I don't know. This is the first time we've seen our team play Hammond tonight. It's all up to Ken, um, J. Rain. Hammond versus Hammond. See how this goes. They both use their grappling hook. They are both on their shields. It is incredible. It's insane. But unfortunately, our Hammond is taken out by their Bastion and their Ana. Looks like it's up the Dasher. It's my world. It's my world. It's taking damage. Solstice Tube is trying to go around healing people as much as he can. Let's see how Dark is trying to do over, trying to catch up. Because what does it take to actually be able for the, for a tank with the time and energy like that? What does it mean to actually lose the tank since it takes him so much time to get across the map? It's devastating for a team to lose their two tanks especially. Mm -hmm. It takes them a long time to cross the map. And they're the ones that are supposed to t distract the other team for the longest time. Keep their team alive. Right. So we now see there's 45 seconds at least left in this match. The team has made it almost to the point. They have a chance. There is, it is, the game is not over yet. All right. And it looks like even the point is being pushed back slightly by the Barons. Which Baron is on the point currently? Oh, uh, let's try to find them now. It looks like they are not on the point anymore. Um, it's My World is still alive, still trying to keep the team fight alive. Right. He does not want to die while the rest of his team is down because then that just keeps the team split up more. Right, right, right. So we have Sigma over here. Sigma getting ready with his ultimate. And look, do you think the Bears should be saving their ultimate for a play? Diva comes in with a bomb but is able to not take out anyone with it. And it looks like it's a defeat for the Barons. What? Wait, no, my bad. It's a win. The Barons come away with the defensive win on this match. I was wrong. I totally messed that up completely. Dasher with the play of the game. The Let's see how it does. Our Sombra? I think that is our Sombra. It is our Sombra. Comes in with the EMP, doing a bunch of damage, an incredible amount of damage, taking out people. It's insane what Dasher was able to do with Sombra. Overall, how would you say that game was? That game was good. We struggled, but we came back, and it just shows you can't just give up after the first match. Right. It's going to go back and forth. You still have a chance until right. the game is over. Well, as we wait, let's go, let's cover some of our chat. Go ahead. <clears throat> our previous comment was. <laughs> oh my gosh! I got hit in the face with flour. Our next comment was, "You should find more stuff to announce." We do be losing. We do love watching Rain scream. I love screaming. Thank you very much. Yes, bring the energy. You're welcome. For the right price, Reigns will follow you around in real life and narrate your world. For the right price, we'll see if we can't set up donations at some point. No amount could ever stop me from paying that. I would say about 100 bucks. I would, I would enjoy that. I'm willing to pay the price. Oh, um, did someone, <laughs> someone said, um, I would sell my firstborn. I mean, sometimes sacrifices are necessary for things to happen in this, in this world. I mean, some of them clearly didn't sacrifice this, their firstborn. Look at 2020. <laughs> but then again, 2020 could have had me announcing your life and screaming at things that I truly don't understand. It looks like right now our team is discussing their new plan, trying to find out what they need to be doing against this team. This is These are tough matches they're currently facing. The coach, Griffin Time says, I will bring that $100. Thank you. I expect that to happen. 
in real life. At the moment, the coaches right now trying to inspire the team. This not only inspiring, but giving them a new plan. Of course, the coach is going to be more experienced with everything, having set up all everything that needs to be set up. So the question is, what's going to be the result of this? We will find out what happens when Peter inevitably comes back to come come back with shoutcasting. Until then, I'll ask this: Who's your favorite Overwatch hero, and why? Mine personally, I love Hammond. I don't know why, but the idea of being a hamster rolling around in a ball is absolutely hilarious to me. And plus, you get a grappling hook. And I really love the idea of being Hammond, but with a grappling hook. My other favorite is Soldier 76, because he's literally so basic, you can't get more basic. At this point, we're now entering the game. King's Rose, one of Overwatch's classic maps. It's even the location for one of their short films in which Widowmaker makes an assassination attempt against an omnic religious leader. Truly, this game has a lot of story to it. There's more to Overwatch than just the competition. It looks... There is a challenge now. Did something go wrong? Huh? No, something go wrong. They lost... It looks like there's a drama going, a drama, a dramatic issue going on. The other team is deciding to only play with four, with four people as a way to mock the Barons. How will the, mo how will the Barons handle this? Joyce Black says, Lucio or Sombra? Those are incredible characters. I love playing with Sombra when she came out. And I found out that Lucio is my personal favorite healer. I love being able to run around and give people healing without actually having to worry about clicking on them. It's pretty incredible. The drama is still going on. Now, we are playing the real game at this point, even though we, were, even though we have lost the first match and had a difficult time. The thing with Overwatch, though, is that at times, people will taunt you. Like we've said before, this is a true mind game. Rosen Time says her favorite character is Diva. Another incredibly fun tank to play as, and a fan favorite character even. Now, is this because she's a gamer? Probably. I can tell you this. A society full of gamers needs a gamer girl. <laughs> but of course, that's just me. Diva's a fun character to play as, and even reminds me of Titanfall 2, one of my favorite games of all time, of course including Overwatch since I'm shoutcasting it. Being able to pop out and literally play as two separate heroes, that's incredible. Even Diva, once she pops out of her mech, can do incredible damage, and it doesn't take too long for her to even gain her mech back. It looks like we're officially starting now. We focus on the enemy team's Roadhog. They seem to be doing a lot. Not actually too much. They seem to be waiting back up, seeing what all they can do. Peter comes back to help Shoutcast. How are things going with the team, Peter? The team's going good. Their main objective is to start communicating more, start getting the um, focus on the right people, and not letting them break the team apart for a chaotic fight. Right, right, right. What do you think their plan is now? They pulled out, Dasher pulls out Echo, who has the incredible ability of mimicking other heroes and their ultimates. So what else does Echo bring to the table? Echo brings mobility. She can fly, uh, make the team be looked up at the sky instead of on the ground where the rest of the team is. Right, right, right. Speaking of, if I'm correct, oh, it's my world coming out with an incredible snipe, tackling their mercy. It looks like she's about to try and get. He's about to try and get the trade. No, it goes for the Roadhog instead. Tries to go for the fair. How difficult is sniping in Overwatch? It's difficult, just like in any other game. There's movement, fast movement. You have fast people who run around the map fast. People who run, run slow. Right. The difficulty is being able to pick them out at a split second and know where to shoot. Right, right. Over, uh, <coughs> Winston coming in with his ultimate, but unfortunately being able to t being taken out. What do you think their plan is with their current setup? Their current setup is trying to survive, trying to get onto the objective, trying mm -hmm. to keep it running. 
I mean, that's what you need to do sometimes. You just need to try and survive. And ultimately, sometimes that's how you win. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's a game of true and direct echo with her ultimate ready about. Looks like the enemy team has been clustered up. The question is, how many of them can they take out? Widowmaker, once again, going in for this night. Jurgen as Zarya pulling out a big old fat laser. Zion trying to resurrect people and unfortunately being taken out at the wrong time. Lucio being able to bring out the ultimate. And are they able to defend the point? And it looks like they're able to keep the point completely contested. Widowmaker still making the important snipes. Echo damaging where she needs to damage, but unfortunately being taken out. So what does Zarya bring to the table as a tank? Zarya brings life and shielding. Her biggest thing is the shield so she can put on specific people. Right. And a bit of an explosive grenade that she can just shoot out of her cannon. <laughs> How does her laser work? Her laser works is just a slow damage. Mm -hmm. And that's the end of the first round. Not able to get on the point almost at all. Wow. That's... Unfortunately, things happen. And... It's okay when those things happen. The thing is, what should the Barons do to try and defend this point? Because I myself have personally had difficult time with King's Row on this map. Uh, a difficult time, I'm sorry. Um, it's going to happen. Um, it depends on what kind of players they take. They need to take um, the right players to look at the enemy team. Um, they're not able to see what champions they're choosing just yet. So it's all blind pick, just hoping to grab the people that they know how to play, that they're good at, right. but also work well together. Right. It looks like we have a uh, hero that I don't I, have, I don't see very often, are uh, Baptiste. What, so Baptiste, if I'm correct, he's able to have an S, uh, a three round burst SMG along with a grenade launcher that instead of dealing damage actually heals his allies. Baptiste is one of my favorites because he's a support and I like to play support in this game, especially Baptiste because he does damage. He has a cool gun, but he he heals his team with a grenade launcher, and uh, his ultimate he's able to. Uh, drop out a little bit of a square in the, in the wall so that people can shoot through it, deal massive damage. Right. Right. It looks That's like here. our Mercy is already taking some damage. Speaking of, our healer being healed by the support. There you go. We have a, we have a fiery red Torbjorn dealing as much damage as they can. Junkrat laying down traps, exploding things where he needs to explode them. Diva flying around the map. And it looks like, what are the heroes are, are they using? It looks like they've used a fire. They have their own kill bean on the enemy team as his own bastion. This looks like they're actually taking some incredible damage. Our Winston coming in and electrifying the competition. And we have picked a Hammond. Oh, but in comes Brigitte on our team. Now, our team hasn't used a hasn't used the Brigitte yet, and our, ha and our hand was just taking out. So why the, the sudden automatic switches at this point? Trying to find a good play. They're trying to find it. Um, they don't know, or they're trying to find what champions to use together against the enemy team. This enemy right. team is going crazy. They can't see a pattern in their play, mm -hmm. and so they're trying to find the right spot. Right. Gaming is all about strategy. It's all gaming is all a puzzle. Even when playing against other people, it's a puzzle on what to do, where to do it, and how. Right. Like we said, this is also a mind game. While we have this little bit of waiting for our, our uh, heroes to spawn, I have to ask, what is your favorite Overwatch hero? My favorite is probably one that we haven't seen yet. It's Soldier 76. He's very simple. He's basically like playing Call of Duty in right. a super-powered game. Right. It's not a complicated character. He's just point and shoot. Right, right, right. We see our, we see our wrecking ball, our Hammond. Oh, Diva comes out with her ultimate. Let's see how it does. And she's able to take a few of our people out. Diva is an incredibly powerful hero. What makes Eva so hard to take out? She just came out of nowhere with an, a suicide attempt and it worked. Mm -hmm. That's what's surprising and what makes her deadly is she's unexpected. Right. And that's the thing with some of these tanks like Diva and Winston. They're able to jump around the map, yet at the same time they're able just to deal this incredible, incredible, incredible amount of damage. We saw our, uh, Winston earlier, he's able to go into this ultimate where he literally just slaps people around. Our Torbjorn pulls out his ultimate, able to lay down essentially a field of lava along with our Hammond laying down a field of mines, essentially making a no-go zone for the enemy team. Now this is a good plan, They, uh, especially with their ultimates, combining them together to not allow them to move the point. It worked. Yeah. However, now they're moving it closer, and this is the part where that 
this oh. map is challenging at. They're in a oh. corridor. They have to turn this corner. Our team can oh, lock it down, keep them from moving if they make it work. Right. Looks like Anna coming in, sniping people, seeing where else she can go. Looks like one of their Baptistas put in a damaging field. So what would, what would be the, the ideal plan, aside from just trying to get, knock down that corner? Where do they need to position? And it looks like they've already even passed the corner, too. They are edging closer and closer to that objective point. Right now, they need to lock it down and then just pick them off one by one. They mm -hmm. need the sniper. They need Anna. They probably should take Widowmaker as well. However, they need to stop this from moving forward at all. Until they were not able to. It looks like we're at a 3-3. Three, three. Right. Things are difficult for the Barons at the moment. Another few questions for our audience. Um, Joyous Black said, Reigns can be my gamer girl. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate that. I'll make sure to start my own actual Twitch channel and I will make weird faces, I guess. Like a live TikTok. Looks like our stream will be coming to an end. I hope everyone had a wonderful time. Thank you for coming in and supporting our BPC Barons. Good night and good day. Anything you'd like to say, Peter? Uh, just a thank you for joining the stream. Thank you for watching. And if you're watching live, thank you for watching live. If you're watching from YouTube, thank you for, com for coming even afterwards and watching it from the end. Sayonara.